Well, folks, we are just about ready for Jason Irwin and his first 45-minute round pen session here just as soon as we get Jason wired up with, uh, with his belt pack and his microphone. And I should mention that all three of these fillies are going to be sold by live auction following the finals on Sunday afternoon. Jason and his wife Bronwyn run a fine operation out near Port Elgin, Ontario uh, with both horses and cattle and their breeding program is mighty impressive and uh, of course they do clinics all over the country in everything from uh, barrel racing to colt starting to refinement to showing and it looks like this little beauty certainly knows where the gate is. <laughs> So let's give a big welcome to Jason Irwin from Port Elgin, Ontario. Uh, yes. Are you live, Jason? Test, test, test. How's the sound sound? He's almost live. Pretty good. You ready to go? I have a lot of dynamic things to say, okay. so yeah, I got to get rolling to get this out. We have 45 minutes, and your time starts now. Excellent. Look at this here. So my first plan is to stand here, let her cross over this stuff, and then we should be pretty well trained. Now, one thing, we raise a lot of blue roans at home, so everybody kind of figured I was going to pick one of these, but actually there's a little more to it. See, I kind of have good luck with them. I had a blue roan filly one time. I sold it to this really, really cute girl. Then she agreed to marry me afterwards. So I'm hoping this one isn't like the divorced one. And uh, now, this is a pretty filly. I'm just going to leave her alone for just a second. I would like to catch her sooner than later, if possible. But I'm just going to give her her moment. And I'm just going to maybe send her the other way here for just a second. Nope. Got to cut her off, but I guess we'll wait. Good. So I'll just move her around here for a second. I just wanted to get one look at the pan. Oh, thank you. Again, normally I'm not going to run them around a whole lot, but I would just like her to see it one time. I'm going to go like this. Nope. I thought I was being tricky for just a split second, but I wasn't. Now. Just kind of sneak up here. She's being fairly oblivious to me. When she comes towards me, I'm just going to back up a bit. Try to draw her in. And again, I could push her around for a while, which I may switch to in just a second. But if possible, I would like to get my hands on her. She'd kind of pay a little bit of attention to me here. And I'll just draw back again. Now, the one thing I'm trying to stay away from is having to rope her, because I'm the world's worst roper. If this was the old west and you were out stealing horses and robbing banks and the posse was after you, you would hope I would be the guy with the noose that was gonna throw it over the tree, because I would probably never get it done. And that, okay, here. Now, I'm just going to catch your attention a little bit, if possible. Well, shoot, it stands just a shade still. You're kind of just making it just good enough. You are strong. Just as, just as easy as that. Excellent. So I don't want to quite say that's how you do it, but... <laughs> so what I'm going to do here, I want to get her focus on me. So I'm going to back up a little bit and draw her to me. And I'm going to change directions a bit here and there. Because I want her coming to me. Again, with my program, I typically don't run them around a lot. Not that I have anything against that. 
But typically, I try to get their focus on me pretty quick. So I'm just going to change directions a bit here. Good. I'm just going to go again. I'm going to go a little bit quicker at times. There. A little too close. Good. Now one thing I'm going to start to do is back up. And then I'm just going to send her past me just a little bit. Sort of like so. Pause, and then go again. Get her started. Get her going. Good. Started. Get her going just a little bit farther. And then bring her back to me. The next thing I'm going to switch over, and I'm going to do it on this side just while I'm here anyways, is move her hindquarters around a little bit, which she did really nice there. Good. So I'm just going to circle her once or twice more. She's a little close, but as we go along, I'll get her a little farther away from me. Good. Swing her hind end over. Good. And she kind of brought her front end towards me a tad there, but nothing that I would be too offended about. Let's try the other way. I'm going to get her going. Send her just a few steps by me. And stop. Get her coming towards me. Send, me by, send her by me. A few steps and stop. And every time she goes by, I just release. I don't care how far she goes, as long as she goes past me a little bit. I can just start adding it and making it farther and farther every time. But in the very beginning, I just try to get the point across. A little stuck there. I'm just gonna try to get her feet moving. There. Good. And anytime you get into something where they're not doing quite what you want and then they do what you want, I consider that a pretty good win. I kind of ignore the stuff I don't like, reward the stuff that's nice as long as that's the last thing, and you're set and ready to roll for, uh, that much farther the next time. Let's get her going around. See, that was a little bit softer. She did it a little more willingly. Going to send her around. Keep her going. There, and she's kind of starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Real nice. Now what I'm going to do is start moving her hindquarters away, going this way. In the very beginning, I pretty much just pull up on their face, shift their butt over like that. Pretty darn simple. Eventually, I'll switch over to where I'm kind of forcing the hindquarters away. I shouldn't say forcing, just sort of encouraging. So I might go more like this after a while. But in the very beginning, I just tend to step forward, make it where the hindquarters moving is the easiest thing for that horse to do. Good. Very happy with that. Just a few things you can do with your rope before you even get started with anything else. You can get the horse used to something moving around its head. So I might just go like this once and stop. Uh, maybe go twice and stop. She kind of flinched there. That's not a real big deal, but I think that's why it's a good idea. Just do once or twice, quit. You get to keep ending on a good note. She's kind of watching that, but not getting too alarmed. And then you can just start kind of feeding the rope out a little bit more. But ideally, I'm trying to stop before she reacts. Now, if she reacts a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but I would like to quit before she does something that I don't really care for. Therefore, she thought standing still was a really good idea. So I'm going a little bit longer now. You can kind of watch that ear. She's not being upset, but she's definitely noticing what's happening. So again, I'm real happy with that. A lot of times when I have just a shade of bit of success like this, I'll very often again end it by backing away and drawing her to me, as long as she doesn't bump into me. So that's good right there. And I tend to do that a lot because the whole point of this is, although I'm trying to get the horse trained, I'm also trying to get this horse where it wants to be with me so we have sort of a partnership going on, not just because I did a bunch of stuff to her. So bringing the horse to me a lot in the beginning, I think kind of gets it where we get a little bit of a bond going on, a little bit of a connection. Now, if the horse was really rude and pushing into me, I would do more sending in the beginning than I would uh, drawing to me if they already wanted to run into me a little bit. I'm just doing the same thing here on the other side. Happy with that. 
I'm not directly in front of her. I'm a little bit off to the side, just never such a thing as she jumps forward or kicks out. And I'll just feed that out a little farther, same as I did last time. Good. You can do the exact same thing across the front. I think a lot of you will know this, but, but what a horse learns on one side of its body, it does not automatically learn on the other side. So although I've worked on the left eye and the right eye, I'm gonna do this as well, going across the front. So now she sees this rope moving out of both eyes. I think that's pretty good right there. Going a little faster, a little faster, kind of feeding that out. Again, I'm going to keep stopping right before I think she might react a little bit more. Another little thing you can do with your rope, very simple trick. I'm going to drop this down over her belly. Now, depends on your horse, but sometimes if you don't feel like you can comfortably reach down there, you can catch it with your foot. Bring the rope up like so. And basically, I'm just going to shuffle this around a little bit and kind of get her used to that feeling around her body because right here where the rope is at this moment is exactly where the cinch is going to go. So I'm just going to kind of work in that area. I find a lot of times if I do a bit of this work, it makes doing up the saddle so much easier on the first go around. So I'm just going to play around with this. If she wants to move, I'm not going to make her stand still. In a way, I almost kind of like that she's moving a little bit. If she was just standing still but clenched and locked, I would look at that as worse than shuffling around. So I'd rather she kind of shuffled if she wants to. And I can go a little farther down the body. Having said that, when you go farther down the body, don't get back. You see her back rise up? And that, so you want to be still up here. So I'm just going to let her carry that. So she was going to wear a back cinch, which is what I have on my saddle. This would be a way to let her get used to it. Now this lead rope is fairly long. Having said that though, if she was maybe not doing as well as she is right now, I would maybe get a second rope, have the other rope around, and then the lead rope run to my one hand just so I could be farther away from her if I felt like she was gonna do something really wrong. Now one thing I'm gonna do here that I think is important, I'm gonna take this lead rope, tighten it down, like so, and then turn it a little bit. So now I have some pressure around her belly and I'm gonna have her walk forward, feeling that pressure around her belly. And then I'm just gonna turn my hand and let that rope slacken again. The reason I feel this is important, everybody, when they see a colt buck with a saddle on for the first time, thinks that they're bucking because of the feel of the cinch. And I'm sure that's part of it. I also think though, some of it is the fact that they don't feel like they can breathe all that well when you cinch the saddle down tight for the first time. When you think about it, if somebody gives you a great big bear hug, the first thing you do is <gasps> trying to get your wind back. I think that's the same thing with the horses. I like to just put a little pressure on, let them feel it, and then take it away. A little pressure on, let them feel it and take it away, and they get the idea that they can step out and move around while feeling that tension around them. So I think it's a good way to get it done without having a big blow up. Now, mind you, just because I've done this does not mean I can just hop on and, or put the saddle on, she isn't gonna buck. Maybe she will, maybe she won't but it's still good prep, it isn't gonna hurt anything. So I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna do it once or twice more. I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit more on this go around. Good. Now this part here, the next part, do, uh, do what I say, not what I do for this part. So I'm gonna let this go back around her belly, a little farther back. You're gonna see her probably get a little bit upset. I'm just gonna hold it for a second and then let yeah, it go right. slack. I just put a speaker on. Then I'm gonna hold it for a second and let it go slack. And the reason I do this is when you get back here, like that's what leads you stop. this is a lot of times an area where if you get into, they're going to start bucking. So if I can get them used to this, I think the odds of them bucking later on with the saddle are a lot less. Now, not that I'm going to hop on and ride right now, but the next part I'm going to move on to is getting this mare ready to bridle for the first time. But I actually do that using my rope, not the bit. So what I'm going to do is put my hand here, rub up and down, and put the lead rope over her ears like so. Because a lot of times when you have a horse that's bad to bridle, what's happened is the person's tried to pull the bridle on, the horse has thrown its face, hit itself in the teeth, and they get bad to get the bridle on. If you do some of this first, it lets them get the feel of something going over their ears the same way the bridle would, but if they throw their head, absolutely nothing happens. They aren't going to bang their teeth, and hopefully they're not going to be bad about this. One other gonna, thing I'm going to do, I'm going to slide my little finger into the corner of her mouth, and I'll turn around both sides so you can see over here. 
Slide my finger in, just take it away when she opens her mouth. That way there, in theory, I can slide my finger in, she opens her mouth, I can slip the bridle on. This stuff is amazing in theory. Sometimes the reality is slightly different. So just gonna truck along here. I'm gonna put the bridle on sooner than later, not because I'm riding her at this moment, but just because usually it takes a little while them playing around, goofing with it to get the feel of it. And I may not even ride her with the bridle this weekend, but we'll just see. I have this adjusted a little bit long on purpose. I'm gonna put the bit under her chin. And slide this up in here. And put it around like so. It's really easy to get over her ears because I intentionally had it a little bit too loose. And then I gotta tighten it up again right quick. And she can just do whatever she wants to do. She can play with that. I have no reins attached to it. So I personally really don't care. Jason, it's interesting how she uh, was very agitated when you first got her haltered and first started to move her. She was kind of wavering her head in her direction, but since what you've been doing, she's got a different attitude towards you than she had when uh, she came in here. Well, why are you telling them, not the judges? <laughs> Point that out. We can't quite hear what he's saying, so <laughs> we don't said, laugh. It's not that we, we didn't like it. We can't quite hear you. Okay, sorry about that. And as you can see here, she's starting to move out a little freer. I maybe fed her slightly too much line there. There. This is the slowest lunging circle on earth. I'm doing this at this speed on purpose because I all want you to see the cues very clearly. There, I'm sure you all appreciate that. So again, she's kind of playing with the bit, so she's not 100% focused on what I'm doing. At the same time, I'm trying to do something pretty low key here for the moment, just while she plays with that. By the way, Jason, not that it matters at this stage, but you're at the 30 minute mark. You got a full half hour to go. I've got 30 to go or 30, What'd you say? 30 minutes to go. Yeah, 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes to go. So with this tarp here, I'm just gonna start playing around with it. Oh, doesn't she look happy about this? It's the same color as you, what are you crabbing about? So a point I really am gonna emphasize here over this weekend because I do this a lot. Horses, everybody probably knows, they're, they're pred, uh, excuse me, prey animals. So their natural instinct is to run away from things. However, you can have something pretty scary that a horse will not be scared of if it runs away from them. So the point of it being this, instead of trying to get this tarp on her, if I back away and have her follow the tarp, it's not as scary. Because if this tarp wanted to run out and eat her, obviously it would not be running away. So I'm just gonna kinda go like this, reach out every once in a while, let her see it and take it away, and kinda try to build her curiosity up just a little bit. Nope, can't touch it. And I'm just gonna kinda play with this for a second. I might start to wave it around just a little bit. I'll do it on one side for a minute. And again, if I just walked right up to her, I think she'd have reacted pretty good, because you can see her every once in a while kinda give a little flinch when she feels like it's getting just a shade too close. Again though, she's following it, not the other way around. Now what I'm gonna do is ball this thing up as much as I can. I'm gonna kind of let her see it. And what I'm gonna try to do is just rub her kind of on the gel and then touch her on the neck and take it away. And I want her to think that's all I was after. So I'm just gonna rub her on the neck again, take it away. And then I'll just start rubbing down her body and taking it away. Once in a while when I feel she gets a shade upset, again, I'm just gonna back away to take all the pressure off her. She's kind of starting to understand that when she comes towards me, that again is when the pressure goes away from her. Rub on her, take it away. Rub on her, take it away. And I'm just gonna keep playing with this for a second. Now once she's kind of past the point where she's kind of accepting, I can stay here a little bit longer. I don't need to leave every second. One thing if you're doing this, I really wanna emphasize, do not let the tarp cross over the horse's back in the very beginning. What happens is if you put the tarp all the way over, she might turn her head away, see it, spook away from it, and jump onto me. So do not let the tarp cross over. You want to do one side, then the other, then you can throw the whole tarp over if you so wish. 
kind of like so. Touch her there. You got just a shade upset, but not bad. Rub on her a little bit more. Take it away. A little bit more. Take it away. And I think everybody's kind of got the idea now of what I'm trying to do. But I still kind of want to go through the, the steps. So I'm just going to play around for a second. Now she is moving. But again, we've done just enough that I think I can kind of stay with her. And you'll kind of see, I keep teetering on the edge of her getting a tad bit upset, but not too much. So I don't keep going. I don't use the thought that I'm going to overwhelm her till she quits. I'm just going to keep doing a little bit and going away, a little bit going away, because I'd really like to keep her calm. Because although we do need these horses quiet to go through this competition, we also need them really listening. So if I just wear the horse out, I think I'm going to run into trouble later on because I'm just not going to have a horse that lasts. If I can keep her thinking and kind of with me, then I think I stand a lot better chance of getting through this in a good way. So now that I've done both sides, I'm just gonna kind of around like so. She doesn't love this part, but now I'll stop again. Kind of like so. Now she wants to walk around me this time. I'm gonna actually use this tarp to sort of lunge her. When she comes in a little close, I'm gonna lift my hand up like so. And you kind of see that drives her away. And again, I got to be careful. I want to be up by her shoulder the whole time. So I'm kind of walking backwards as I'm doing this because I don't want to be in range of her back feet if ever she was to get upset. Again, I'm just going to kind of move this around a little bit. She isn't loving it, but she isn't doing anything too bad either. That's kind of like when my wife has to spend time with me. She isn't loving it, but she can tolerate it. And this right side, she's just a shade bit more nervous than her left side. So I'm just going to let her carry it for a minute before I start moving it around a little bit. But I'll just go a wee bit. If she really blows past me, I'm going to step back, draw the tarp off her, and then have her follow it again. I don't want her thinking she outran it and got away from this. I want her to think, yeah, I tried to get away and it turned out I ended up following it again, so obviously nothing too terrible happened. She does look good in blue. That's, uh, That's why I wore this shirt. Her... I assumed I would take a blue one. They could have had a red tarp and it just wouldn't be the same. Good. So I'm just going to walk around for a second and give her just a quick little break. I don't want to just keep throwing things at her and have her kind of getting overwhelmed. My mic is disappearing. So I just every so often going to give her a little break. I'll stop, pet on her. This part here you definitely don't have to do. But I'll take some time to get them used to the whips a little bit. I tend to go out away from them in the very beginning, and I'll just give little light pops. And then I'll maybe have her follow me around just sort of while I'm playing with the whip. I don't want to completely turn my back on her just in case she was a spook, but I don't think she's going to run into me if she's scared of this. Again, I'm not going to crack much louder than that. At this point, just kind of low like so. Do the other side. Good. Good. Very happy with that. <laughs> This is the part where I make a good story up. I have a great, great grand uncle who was Australian. I'm lying about that. I'm just gonna take here, kind of the same deal with the pad. Just show it to her, take it away, show it to her, take her away. Now, if you've done a good job with the tarp, usually the pad isn't all that difficult. Having said that though, treat everything as if it's going to be a little tricky. I'm just gonna kind of rub down her body with it. Now, I maybe spoke just a shade too soon because now she's moving from it. 
So I'm going to go like so, just on one side. Oh, he's got it. And the next session, I'm going to do a little bit more moving her away. But again, at this point, I kind of want her with me more than shoving her off. Good, good. Going to kind of put up my arms sometimes when I feel like she might be getting a shade too close there. Going to put the pad on. Going to work the pad back and forth. I'm going to throw the pad on at times. I'm going to intentionally lift it up and then kind of slow its fall. And I want to do that because when I throw the saddle on, it's obviously heavier and I can't control as well how hard that comes down on her. So if I kind of up and down like that, she gets used to something kind of swinging over and coming down with just a little bit of a thud. Make sure I got this tied in knots here. And whether I put it on and do it up or just take it off again will just sort of depend on her reaction. Now I'm just gonna try to keep her as still as I can for this part, just because I don't want her to move around and dump this. The pad and all that stuff I can just take off again. The saddle I'd prefer, I'm just gonna rub down her belly so she feels it coming. And Latigo got a little bent up in flight. So I'm gonna do this just Snug enough that I'm pretty sure the saddle ain't going anywhere, but no more than that. So I'd like one more hole in it, if possible. This is the part where she says, but I know karate. So I have that back cinch where it barely touches and the front one just snug enough that I think it's going to hold maybe one notch snugger than that. Now if possible, I'm going to kind of keep her head up as she goes around because when a horse goes to buck, they have to get their head down, <laughs> at least except for the, maybe the exceptionally talented ones. Yeah. Yeah, he said he'd get it. But I'm just going to have her go around like so. Now, if she goes to buck, on the one hand, if it's too much, I'm just going to let her go. On the other hand, what I'm going to do as I'm playing with this is send her around, and every once in a while, I'm going to give just a little wee hind quarter yield like that one. That keeps her from getting too off track and building up too much steam. Now, I don't want to yield her hindquarters fully because that would make her turn around and face me, and I don't want her to look at me and run into me. So there, and then I'm just going to yield a little bit. So she trotted. I'm happy with that. And then I kind of took that power away from her right before she had a chance to do anything wrong. Not that I really thought she would. I'm just going to kind of walk with her. Again, I don't want to get too far back here. Good. I'm going to check the saddle. Swing her hip away. Stop her here. Pull one. Happy with that. So good. Now I'm just going to back up here. Just because I'd like to be able to move her a little farther away from me, I'm going to pick up this stick. Now, just be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to stand right in front in case they do something silly. You 
kind of see you're getting a little tight, but not bad. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to kind of have her move around here for a minute. And you can kind of see those ears going. She's looking back over her shoulders. She's not 100% loving this just yet. It's going to yield her hindquarters. A little bit more. There we go. Now at some point I'm going to change sides. You want to be a little bit careful when you do change sides just because you don't want to stand right in front. I want to switch quick. There, good. Good. This is the part in the training session where I ask for a volunteer. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I was serious. That's pretty good there. So now you can see you're getting a little bit upset again, more on this side than the other side. I'm going to switch back. And again, I just want to check the cinch because again, I started off pretty loose. Not loose, it definitely was going to hold if she bucked. Just so you know, Jason, there's 15 minutes left on the clock. Yep. Now this rope is a shade short. I'm going to see if I can get her up into a lope here. Slightly elevated lope. <laughs> Oh, you could have rode that. This is Alberta. I thought you guys were used to this stuff. <laughs> so, if I say I'm real happy with that, is anyone going to believe me? <laughs> Again, I'm kind of actually, without lying too much, I am happy that she kind of worked through it relatively quick, I'm just hoping we don't have to work through another one. Again, I'm just going to go this way. Nice. Good. I said I was looking for a volunteer. I didn't mean to get on. I just mean someone else to run for a minute. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Again, just going to check my cinches. And this mare really puffed out when we got started here. Now one more little thing. I'm just going to do this back cinch up one more too. Now doing the back cinch up where they feel in the beginning might set them off but I'd rather she got set off before I got on her back, if I'm being totally honest. No, don't come too close. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna do something here, a little trick that I use, and I find it sometimes helps get the buck out before I get on one. You gotta be just a little careful when you do it here. I'm not gonna put. <laughs> I don't know why that reminds me, but we've got a big ranching operation in BC called Blue Goose Cattle Company. This is exactly what I look like when I try a two step. So I'm just gonna have no tension for a minute, which I've already done, and then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of tension on. A little bit more. And one thing you can do with this one if you really want, I don't know if I care today, but you can get one loping that doesn't want to lope. Oh, a little too close. I won't worry about the loping part. Again, I'm just gonna let her carry that though. 
There, so she's carrying it with a little tension, but was still good about it. And I don't like to go like this too long because I find if I do, I just start getting them ornery. I'm not looking for an argument with her, I'm looking for the right thing. So again, I'm just gonna walk around for a second. Just while I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions? One? Uh, why did I choose this filly over the other ones? Because I got third choice. <laughs> that. Uh, the other ones there, the little Bayron, very nice looking horse. I didn't pick her because she wasn't quite as big. And sometimes with these, the horses will tire out uh, by the time you get the last day. So I think all of them were really nice horses. I kind of had a, her and a different one in mind. I was kind of 50-50 between her and the other blue. So basically someone grabbed it first and I took this one. Actually, I should make this more heart heartfelt. I looked into her eyes. She told me that we were going to do great things. I picked her. What do you say? Again, I'm kind of pulling her around, but I have the, the snap attached to the bit. Now, I'm gonna try to draw her around and get her to start turning off the bridle. Now, I've done so much follow stuff, she just wants to come to me, which I can't blame her for, but I gotta start getting her turning, so I'm just gonna kind of walk with her here. 10 minutes now, Jason, 10 okay. minutes. There. Stop scaring my horse. <laughs> Just joking. And again, she's trying to follow me, which is exactly what I've been working on. So again, I can't blame her too much for doing that. There, that one was a lot softer. No offense, I kind of like this crowd more. <laughs> Just joking. That side's probably from Manitoba. Message. <laughs> oh, I should have waited till you were in that side. <laughs> that, so there's three turns that way. Put her on the other side. Now I'm just going to walk this way. I'll just do this a few times. A lot of times what happens is they'll figure out how to turn one way and then they'll get a little bit stuck and only want to turn one direction. So maybe this time it'll take her just a second longer to think this part out. Again, she just kind of following me. Again, you could kind of look at it as my fault in a way because I've taught her that. But at the same time, I find this is a good way to get a little steering on. If I feel like she's a little stuck, I can move over here, but I want to be pretty far back. There. Good. That was a lot smoother. That was better again. Very good. How much time have I got? We have seven and a half minutes. Oh, tons of time. Had to do a quick calculation there. And if I remember correctly, when this is done, all the tack is to be off except the halter. Is that correct? What do you say? Uh, that'll be the judge's call. That's generally the way it's done. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay, they said it, it's... Uh, the answer's yes. The answer, okay, they just took a quick vote. Yes. Yes. And yes, the answer is yes. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Tack off before the time runs out. So good. I think now we're, my math is real quick, we're at six minutes. 
So I'm just going to try to get this mare to back up a little bit. What I'm going to do is put a little pressure on the reins, wait for her. I'd like her to start moving her body weight backwards a little bit. If she doesn't, I'll just rock ever so lightly. She kind of moved her head. I'm going to release on that just because it was a movement. This time I'd like her to move her foot just a wee bit. The weight shifted, so I stopped. Do it again. Hopefully her weight shifts backwards again. Now she might argue with her face because she's a little bit like that. So I'm just going to play around here for a second. I'd like to see her rock her weight. Oh, you are almost doing it. There. So as small as that was, I picked up on her and she got back. That's all I care about. If it's one millimeter, I'm happy. I'm just going to pick up again. Play with it. She's giving her face. I'm going to release on that because her head did kind of tuck. This one foot here just keeps lifting there. These are definitely baby steps. <laughs> I'm going to go back a little bit. There. That was the other foot, so I'm happy about that. And by working on the backup, I'm actually working more on the stop. Because if I can pick up on them and they get their weight back, I can get one stopped. So it's hard to work on stopping in the very beginning. It's easier to work on backing up, but it kind of gets me the same thing. So like that time there, she didn't move very far. Thank you. But it was pretty willing. Again, she's going to... There. 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 Five yeah. minutes now. All Five right. minutes. There, there, there. Good. Real happy with that part. Now, I'm going to start looking for a place to kind of wrap up here. I'm just going to pull her saddle off. Going to kind of step to the front, not the back, in case she was to spook. I may just play with this a little bit. A lot of times those horses that kind of shake their head are not the most willing to back up in the very beginning. So I don't like to do a lot at one time, I just want to do a little bit. I don't know if I'll have quite time to do it, but my next step, I'll just tell you what it is, and I'll probably do it this afternoon, is I will pick up here, and I will ask her to back like that. And that way there, it's more where my hands would sit when I'm riding, so I'm kind of getting her ready to do it when I'm on her. There. So I'm just going to take this headgear off her. Come around with me. A little different than when she first came in. <laughs> so I'm quite happy with this. Now, the lick and chew there. Again, you kind of see she sweated up a little bit. Like this was a lot for this mare, but I don't think it was beyond what she was capable of. I think she is one that if I had tried to uh, tire her out and work her through everything, I think she's one that could have got where she kind of got up tight and then we had a little bit of a meltdown. Now, I guess we did have one little one and that the part where nobody ponied up and offered me a hand. Right. I'm going to remember that for the weekend, by the way. And that, but this here, I just want her more where she's very willing, kind of, again, I kind of want her looking to me a little bit more. I don't want to be like, here's the stuff I did to you. At the very beginning, you might have a little bit of that, but as we go along, I want to have it more where the filly's part of it. Uh, again, I do quite a bit of liberty work. I tend to do it, though, more online in the beginning, and then I switch to loose. So a lot of the liberty program is just simply drawing your horse into you, kind of like so, and then from there, uh, we start building up to some fancier stuff, but just for her first session, considering we did a bunch of other stuff too, I'm really happy with that part. Two minutes to go, Jason, and they asked you to leave the halter on. Okay. Oh, so they made me run around after her, but they don't want to. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jason and Bronwyn have a great television show that runs on RFD-TV Canada and the Cowboy Channel. 
called the Horse Trainers, one hour once a week, I believe, and they're going into their third season coming up. Again, I'm just changing this up a little bit, crossing from one eye to the other. I'm far enough in front of her. I don't think that matters a whole lot. Something I'll do too, I'll make a point of petting with the whip. I didn't do that part a whole lot earlier, but I'll scratch them with it. I want her thinking this is the noisiest curry comb I have ever seen. Let's do it once quick on the other side. And we're down to the last minute. Good. So for the last minute, I'm just gonna make sure she has no hair kind of rubbed back in the cinch area. I'm just gonna kind of pet it clean. Pet it back, I should say, just so it has a chance to kind of dry, flat, not all roughed up. I don't think I got time for much of a grooming. I've never been very good looking after hair. I'm still not figured out why, but. All right, I think I'll just leave her at that. I'm very happy with her, so we'll see you this afternoon. All right, Jason Irwin, just a great job. And we'll have a 15 minute break. And then at 11 o'clock, it'll be Cade Mills right here at the round pen. Okay.